it's me i know i haven't been here in a really long time but i just i don't know i guess i wanted to explain myself <laughs> hi everyone for those who don't know my name is deja i'm a traditional astrologer I used to practice publicly and I'm still debating whether or not I want to make a comeback. But I just wanted to give you all an update as to where I've been and like where I'm going and like my thoughts and such. So you may know, but I have Aries rising. So the eclipses that have been happening in Aries and Libra have been happening in my first and my seventh house. And honestly, they haven't like fucked shit up the way, I mean, knock, let me knock on wood, but they haven't fucked shit up the way that I thought they were going to. It's actually been relatively tame. And I'm thinking part of that is because the Aries one, the Great American Eclipse, the Mars-Saturn conjunction was happening at the same time in Pisces and Mars rules Aries. And so that was happening. Whatever Mars is doing in the sky will also like give us some detail as to like what other areas of life or like what other influence this eclipse will would have had on your life. And Mars has been in Pisces for a really long time with Saturn. And so I'm thinking maybe it hasn't like, maybe the Great American Eclipse one, the April 8th one, wasn't super wild for me because of Mars and Saturn conjoining in my 12th house. And the 12th house of isolation, seclusion, self-undoing, yada, yada, yada. Things you can't see. Hidden enemies. All bad stuff, right? But like, I don't know. And I thought that I was going to be the victim of like a, a coup of some sort. But like, that hasn't happened so far. So um, we're almost out of eclipse season. When does the sun go into Taurus? I think that's this... Friday. It's on Friday. So, I don't know. I did, however, get a new job. Um, I know it's I know it's about the job uh, because I like was doing interviews and stuff like that during the Mercury retrograde because also Mercury retrograde is happening right now. Mercury is my time lord. And so I think it was more of Mercury retrograde that I'm getting than the eclipses, which is why, you know, annual perfections, time lord techniques are very important and crucial and will act will like give you so much clarity as to like what your year ahead is going is, is going to look like. And also like uh, helps you to focus in on just one planet because doing all the transit at transits at once is just so overwhelming. And I remember hearing this, Kelly Surtees talks about this. It's so overwhelming to keep track of like what the moon is doing, what Mercury is doing, what Saturn is doing, Mars, Venus, da, da 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 That's so much work. It's so much better, especially for like when you're developing a personal practice to find your time lord you know, annual perfections, and maybe I'll do a video on that. I have an Instagram post on it. I'll link it below if you like to read, and I'll link some other resources. Find your time lord and keep track of that. And just keep track of that one planet. Now, if you're in like a cancer year, then that's gonna be that's gonna be something. I'm in a Mercury year, Mercury years are also something because Mercury is ret stationing retrograde all the time. I have re Mercury retrograde, and so honestly, truthfully, I don't mind Mercury retrograde periods. I actually kind of enjoy them. Oh, I'm just so much more familiar with the back and forth energy. And I also feel like I can keep up more. I also think I just have uh, ADHD. Um, I just, I yeah, I think I have ADHD. I have not gotten a diagnosis yet because I'm figuring out health insurance stuff, but I'm pretty sure I do. I'm pretty sure, this has been like a two year uncovering thing for me. So yeah. And it would make sense. I have a very debilitated Mercury and my executive function things don't always really work out the best for me. <laughs> but who knows? I don't know. I don't want to like be one of those people who's like, I may have ADHD and then like, I don't, you know, but I, it's also it's like a funky nuance. Cause like, I also get like people like doing a lot of research on a, on a condition and presenting the facts to the doctor and being like, I have these experiences, you know, but I also like here as a Gen Zer, I just, and as like being a teenager, I just, and just being someone who is black and a woman, I just hear all the people around me saying, I can like forecast them saying to me, well, maybe if you just tried harder, or maybe if you gave yourself a schedule or you made a routine or da 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 or you don't have ADHD, you just need to motivate yourself more, da 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 maybe you just need to work out, blah, 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 blah. I hear all the things, I know what everybody's going to say to me, because if I do have it, I've been experiencing this all of my life and so i know the i whatever i just don't believe i'm lazy i don't think i'm a lazy person i'm a very motivated person when i want to do things and when i'm really excited about it when i'm really passionate about it but when it comes to the mundane things my god they take me forever and i then i hear someone else saying well yeah they have this everybody but like it really takes me forever okay that is a whole other conversation nevertheless back to the eclipses i feel like they didn't like really like hit me like a ton of bricks like how i anticipated still knocking on wood and so i'm wondering if one i think it's like an internal thing like i think a lot of it was like me realizing that like i do kind of like want to be known to some capacity i do like having something to say and sharing my thoughts with the world i do like having an audience like i have a whole 11th house stellium of course i love having an audience i love sharing information you know so i don't know i'm trying to figure out i'm trying to like teeter-totter between like okay like am i practicing astrology what am I saying? Oh, no, this internal stuff. Yeah, so, and I'm, I also really love photography. Like, I, I found a new hobby, and I feel like I'm kind of, like, kind of fi finally accepting it, and that's, that's a tough situation within itself, because I had an old friend who was a photographer, and so every time I do it, I, like, it's really, it's really strange, but I am 
getting to the place where now it is just my art and I'm really enjoying it as a medium. There's been a lot of like conflicting things that I feel like have been going on within me. I've been healing a lot from a lot of stuff that has happened in the past few years that like all, I mean like, I, I don't know if I've talked about it, but like just shit from 2020, I'm still healing from shit from 2021 and burning out in 2021. I'm still healing from shit from 2022. Like so many things have happened. And even earlier in 2023, uh, what year are we in? 2024. Earlier this year, 2024, 2023, I wanted to quit my job, but I didn't because I love my boss and I actually love my job. Um, but I have room to like get another one. So that's why I got another job. Yeah. And I'm also sitting here like, oh, do I give, I, I was like, you know what? I'm just going to apply to jobs and just try to get out there. First of all, the job market sucks. It sucks. At one point I thought that I was just like unqualified. No, I'm not unqualified. I'm very qualified to do the jobs that I've, because I've applied for jobs that I'm a little underqualified for. I've applied to jobs that I'm definitely overqualified for. And I've applied to jobs where I'm like, it's just right, you know? And I have not heard back from anyone. It is so strange to me. Well, one place I applied to the library to do like a digital content coordinator or something like that. They em emailed me back in a couple of days and was like, no, sorry. And I was like, oh damn, all right. Well, thank you for getting back to me at least. And that's also what I get for applying to a job while the moon was in my 10th house in Capricorn in fall. Why the fuck did I do that? I don't know. Sometimes I like to like do is just like, sometimes I like to just test shit out just to see. Like one time I ordered a package when Mercury was stationing direct. Package never came. Never came. Never saw it again. I just like to test shit out sometimes just to see what's really going to happen if I try to like test and play with fate. And fate does bite back. It does. So, you know, listen to the astrologers when they say, maybe not right now. Um, because <laughs> I don't listen, but I like, it's like a hairdresser. It's like hairdressers trying the styles out on themselves before they give it and provide it to their clients. I feel like that. I feel like I just kind of like to say, fuck it. We're just going to do whatever the fuck I want to do. Who gives a fuck that Mercury stationing direct? And I just like to do it. And then I bite myself in the ass. But it's fine. Anyway, so... <laughs> Yes, eclipses have been strange, lots of internal stuff. Um, I'm moving out. I don't know if I mentioned it, mentioned it in this video because I've been trying to record something and it's just been uh, kind of uncomfortable, but I'm moving out in June, June 5th. I'm, me and Gabe are so, my boyfriend, I'm so excited. We're moving out and in together. We're also moving with my friend, my childhood friend, Zach, who I did Zodiac Buzzed with. So maybe we can get some new Zodiac Buzz stuff. No promises. We are also burnt out from that as well. So as I said, I'm recovering from a lot of things at the moment. So that's where I'm at right now. I don't know if I'm going to start giving readings again. I really have no idea. I want to, I think. And if I do, I think I have to reframe my opinion and my thoughts on being an astrologer and like practic practicing astrology. I need to get off Twitter. I need to have better boundaries and I need to get better at running a business. Getting better, ba better boundaries is the main thing. Getting better at running, getting better boundaries, getting better at running a business or like responding to emails in a timely manner. Um, not rescheduling uh, readings the day of giving people like 20, you know, like just shit like that. Cause healing from burnout and being burnt out, it was so hard for me to like, some days I was like, yes, I can totally do this reading. And then like, I would just be like, I can't, I cannot talk to anybody today. I'm so tired. I, there were so many days I was just so tired and all I could do was just lay on my bed and bed rot and just scroll TikTok for hours and hours and hours. It was so bad. And that's not really rest even. That's just like, cause I was even like, just like really hard on myself about the fact that I had to do this. And like, I'm just not good enough. And da 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 da. My brain was running through all the things. So whatever, again, we're working on it. Undiagnosed ADHD, who knows? So yeah, if I do give readings again, I need to get better boundaries, be better at responding to emails, all that stuff, giving my time, giving myself time for us, getting off of Twitter, because I'm really not like a really intense traditional astrologer. I'm really not. I am, as in within the context of like, I use whole sign houses, the, the traditional rulership scheme, annual perfections, the fixed stars every now and then, you know, the decans, I, I'm a Hellenistic astrologer. I'm a, Hel a, a, a modern astrologer practicing these other older techniques. But I also, like, don't know how to do that many techniques. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know how to do the F Fadar periods. I don't know how to interpret them in a way that, like, is helpful and beneficial for people and my clients. I am a patron of Dr. Lomi, and he is amazing and gives a lot of resources on, like, medieval um, astrology and, like, Muslim, uh, and from, like, the Muslim perspective, Islamic tradition. And, um... It's incredible. I, I learned, I know how to find the month of joy and I know how to find the uh, Lord of the year in that tradition and all these other things. Like I know how to, uh, the monthly revolutions. I know how to interpret that chart. I know how to do that. But like, I haven't been able to do it enough. I haven't, I haven't been able to apply it to myself enough to be able to then make, come to conclusions for other people in a way that is as poetic, as beautiful, as resonant as I can looking at someone's annual perfections. Like, and maybe I can find a way to blend the two, but like, I also don't want to hear people on Twitter being like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? Who said you can do that? You know what I mean? Like, 
relax. This is it. Astrology is serious, and we all need to like take our take our job seriously. But like, a lot of I, I just feel like we all need to like bring it down a few notches. It's really not that serious. And also, we're all all the astrologers here are fighting each other. When in reality, you just need to be meeting with clients. None of this matters. Make money. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. And the, the thing is that the people who are on Twitter arguing and, like, just, like, being ridiculous don't give readings. So I'm also like, why am I stressing over people who, like, aren't even actually, like, consulting? And this another good point is that not every... You can be a great astrologer, but a terrible consultant. Like, and I think I'm a, I'm a good consultant. And I'm a good astrologer, you know what I mean? But I'm not, like, fantastic. I don't have, like, all these, like, crazy interpretations. I'm not doing any crazy, like, uh, translate translations or anything like that. I'm not reviving anything. I'm just kind of, like, doing my doing my thing and doing my work. And honestly, truthfully, I think these eclipses are showing me that, like, it's okay. Like, I can just do that. And I can operate on my own. And I can be the hermit. Wow, I'm actually, this is actually what's making a lot of sense to me. Because even Mo, shout out to Mo, gave me a short, brief tarot reading. And I said, how can I make more money? Because I'm always curious about that. I have the ruler of my 10th in my first house. So yeah, I always care about my career and how I'm seen in my public image and all that shit. I care about that stuff so fucking much. Nevertheless, she gave me a reading and and essentially what it was all this other stuff. Uh, things aren't working out. I'm like trying to go after money. So I'm trying to do all these other things by like collaborating with other people, aka doing freelance design related work, which really, <sighs> that's a conversation for another day. It's a story time for another day. But she pulled the hermit. And I do think that I have to kind of just like strike my own path and go at this alone yeah i have astrologer friends for sure i just feel like i need to just do this on my own and stop trying to like collaborate with other people and outsourcing that energy with other people and trust that i know what i'm doing i think i use other people as like a crutch sometimes to make me feel better about what i'm doing because i'm not doing it alone and i feel like that's what i feel like maybe that's not a crutch crutch isn't the right word because i feel like that may be just like a nor normal response it's scary to do things alone it's so much better to do things with other people but I have Saturn in my first house and I'm ruled by Mars. So doing things alone, and I have Mars in Aquarius, doing things alone is written in my nativity. Doing things in a weird way is written in my nativity. So I think I just have to accept that as my fate. I, I, I never accept my fate, but I think that this is calling me, this whole situation is calling me to accept my fate. So I may give readings again. I know I'm definitely going to be redoing my website because I've been doing a lot of like photo and design work. And even though I don't necessarily want to do design work, especially for other people, I may get into photography for other people and do that like here and there during the summer. I'm not sure. Just for funsies, because I just like doing it for fun. Um, we may do that. And I'm going to put that on my website just so it can have a place to live so that people can look at things and stuff like that. And just kind of like, I don't know, just look at things. I like having a website. It's like having your own little Tumblr, but like not really. But kind of. So I want to get back into that. And if I give readings, I give readings. If I don't, I don't. It would be nice to make some extra money. I'm not going to lie to you. And I think I'm in a better place now. To where like I have time and space. I've gotten very comfortable and very certain with my um, my other job. So yeah, I think this is where I'm at. We're figuring it out. I'm gonna keep you guys updated on my life. I'm on TikTok now, and I want to. I'm gonna start posting more TikToks. So follow me on TikTok. I think this is gonna be the space where I kind of just sit down and chat and yap, and you listen to me if you want to listen to me. If you don't listen to me, you don't have to listen to me. Um, and TikTok will be where I vlog. I'll probably vlog on here too. I don't know. I just wanna have fun. I'm tired of being so serious. I am so serious, just Saturday my first. I'm so serious. Generally, I take myself very seriously. But, like, in order to, like, combat that, in order to mitigate that, in order to remediate Saturn, I have to have a lot of joy and a lot of optimism and a lot of, like, yeah, just straight up joy and, and confidence. Because if I don't, and just, like, carefreeness. And if I don't intentionally, in, like, incorporate carefree, don't think about it, just go for it sort of energy, I won't be carefree. And I will stress and I will get in my head and I will make decisions that are based in stress and fear and not make decisions based in like excitement about life. Enjoy. I think that's all I have to say. I don't really think I have anything else to say. I hope you all have a great day. Thank you for listening to me, Yap. And I'll see you soon. Bye.